Well, good day and welcome to you. It is August the 26th. I hope you're having a great day wherever you happen to be. My name is Gary Willing. I want to welcome you to Search for Signs, uh, especially if you've never been here before, uh, and also welcome you back if you have. And just encourage you, if you want to know more about this information, you want to educate yourself better, see if there's anything to this, you know, in terms of if there's any truth to this for yourself or not. I have included links to websites that give you really good information about my training the Masters of Wisdom, why they're coming back now, their purpose of coming back at this time, course what does it mean for everyone that they are coming back and so forth and especially the priorities of the teacher mainly the need to create peace and put war behind us forever is a little cheat sheet on his initial priority for humanity but anyway i think those websites give you really good information about it, so hopefully you'll look into it now i also would like to give a shout out to jerry wells uh, i think it's kc and spirit spirit watcher 178 for commenting i really do appreciate uh, joining the discussion and of course everyone's welcome to post comments or ask questions if that's the case and just post your question in the comment section like so many people do and that will spark a conversation in the next video all right now um, in the last video I didn't get a chance to answer spirit spirit watcher 178's question that, that this person asked and I promised that I would try to answer it in this video so that's what I I'm going to talk about this first, and then I think I have a couple other questions to look into. All right, now, um, what did he, this person ask? Uh, what is Sharon International of the United Nations and this Luciferian initiation by David Spangler? So, if you don't mind, I'm going to break this up into three segments. What is Sharon International, the United Nations, and the Luciferian initiation by David Spangler? Okay, so they, they're not connected or related I guess in one way you could say they are and another way you could say they aren't. So that's why I'm kind of separating it like that. But the United Nations, uh, from the master's point of view, is the hope for humanity. It will be where nations will discuss diff you know, disputes peacefully. It will also give us more of a cohesive global environment to live in where nations, you know, it's not just that there's peace in one nation and war and terrorism and looting and, and crime and so forth in another nation. We need to have justice for everyone, and the United Nations will be a part of that. When it comes to the principle of sharing, the masters have said that there will be many plans put forth by humanity about starting the principle of sharing, but the one that Maitreya says would be the best plan to really do would be to have an actual department within the United Nations that oversees the principle of sharing, headed up by a master, a very, very advanced member of humanity. And more than likely initially a master of some kind. And that would be the best way for nations to share their excesses with other nations and get paid back for those excesses by other nations and so forth. But that's the way they see it is the hope for mankind. There's a lot of really, really bad press and conspiracy theorists of theories about the United Nations, but none of those are really true. It, it really is, right now it doesn't have a lot of political teeth in terms of getting anything done because of the Security Council, where one member, permanent member of the Security Council can veto anything that they don't like. So eventually the Security Council will be disbanded and each nation would have a vote. It wouldn't matter if it was a tiny nation like Luxembourg or a really, really big nation like China or the United States. They would have one vote, uh, which is the way I think it should be. Anyway, but that uh, is in the future. Now, Sharon International, okay, is an organization that is purpose is to get the information out about my trade and the masters of wisdom about his priorities in the same way that I'm trying to do with this channel. Now, it when I was a part of the Sharon International group back in the 90s, it was a very loosely affiliated group, meaning that we just kind of met at somebody's house. There were no officers. There was no head. There was no foot. We were kind of just trying to get the word out about Maitreya. We were even doing transmission meditation at the time. And then over time, like so many groups eventually do, is they suffer the fate of becoming an organization, start to have officers that dictate what they want to, the, to everybody else, and that's not a real group. So according to the masters, in the future, groups will be doing 
the work and it's not going to be individuals. So throughout history, there's always been these high flying individuals that have been influential in one area or another. In the future, it will be groups that will be doing it, not individuals. So we're moving out of a time over the last 2000 years where the the keynote of the last 2000 years is a powerful, potent individuality, which is a part of the plan, but it's, it's part of the problem now because every, we have six and a half or seven and a half billion individuals now on the planet. You can't have it like that where everybody's fighting for what's best for them. You know what I mean? That's why we have the, the problems that we have. Some people are very good at it and become very, very rich. Some people aren't very good at it and, and live in abject poverty or die of hunger. And, that's, and yet it's acceptable to live in a world like that, even when we have enough food and resources to feed those people, um, because we're all just individuals thinking that we're all separate, when in fact we are one and it affects each and every one of us. That injustice affects every single one of us. It creates tensions within us, whether we are aware of it or not, actually. It destabilizes the peace in the world because there's not, it's, ju it's not a just situation. So what we're moving into is where we have a more just situation where groups are, are head, you're making the changes and those kind of things. And even though the, there will never be this homo homogenous type of group, it will still be made up of individuals, each different each with a different quality, with a different makeup, with a different color to add to the group, being just as individual as they always were, but working more cohesively with a group rather than only being concerned about the individual. But it hasn't, that hasn't happened yet, but it's, we're moving into that because the energies of Aquarius can only be utilized in group formation. So Share International was set up and designed by Ben under the guidance of his master to help bring about group work. And they ended up suffering, as far as I'm concerned, and there'd be a lot of people who, if they're from Share International listening to this, would disagree with it. Others from Share International would completely agree with this, is I saw them becoming an organization years ago because there was officers that would dictate to everybody else, this is what we're going to do. We're not going to do this. We're going to do this or that, you know, and that kind of thing. And it was kind of a democracy where we would vote on things. But a democracy isn't even true group work. It should be a, a consensus, really. But it's very difficult to operate like that. So they suffer the, I think they're suffering the same fate as other groups like the Alice Bailey groups with the Arcane School did and the Theosophical Society that was headed up by uh, Helena Bavatsky. But even the churches suffered the same fate, although they came under the light of the Piscean Age, which was about each individual. You know, so if you look at the last 2000 years, for instance, we are in a we view life differently than we did 2000 years before the age of Pisces. Around the time of Jesus, no one really thought for themselves, said maybe the kings and the queens and and Jesus could think for himself and other people like him and so forth. But the very advanced members of humanity could, but the vast majority of humanity couldn't. So if you could go back in time and talk to some of these people, they would have no idea what you're trying to say to them. Things like, you need to be yourself, man. You need to go be the best you can be. They had no clue what that meant. It wasn't even a thought in their mind. But now, everybody has that thought. You know, live your dreams. You know, be an individual. Those, those thoughts didn't occur 2,000 years ago. It took 2,000 or a little over 2,000 years to get to the point where humanity could do that. Just as the notion and the thought of group work is totally foreign to people. A lot of people are scared about being in a group because they think that it means that they would lose their individuality, which it doesn't mean that at all. It means harmony through diversity is really what it means. So 2,000 years from now, if we could go into the future 2,000 years from now, we would see a humanity interrelating to with one another totally different than they are today. Nations will be inter interacting and, and relating to each other totally different than they do today. But, it, you know... That's where we're kind of headed. So that's, I think, really Sharon. But the main purpose of Sharon International was to get the information out there. But they're not affiliated with the United Nations any more than they're just an NGO, which is a non-government organization. Uh, and really, in order to become an NGO, you have to just fulfill out, fill out the proper paperwork and submit enough money and you, you can do that. So it doesn't really mean much to be an NGO other than to kind of give you a little bit of you know, street cred with with maybe uh, 
nonprofit organizations that you're an NGO with the United Nations, but the United Nations has nothing to really do or direct with Share International. Share International doesn't have to report to the United Nations or anything like that. So hopefully that kind of, you know, sep- you know, kind of um, elucidates that whole relationship. Now, in terms of the Luciferian initiation by David Spangler, I was talking to a friend of mine who listens to this channel, and he had a lot of information about that about David Spangler and some of the other things that might be confused when people hear the term Luciferian initiation that I was unaware of, really. And he he really shed a lot of light on it. So I got to give him credit to it. And his name is Nick Younger on this channel. He comments, and I just met him just a, a little while ago, and we started talking on the phone. He was like very, I, I learned a lot from just talking to him. So I'm, I'm trying to organize a video with him where he'll talk about these things. So it might give you a better understanding of it. But the way it when it, when he was talking to it, it kind of made sense. Is Luciferian meaning light bringer, initiation meaning expansion of consciousness? Is what he was saying that that David Spangler was saying in his book was that over the coming age, humanity will be more enlightened, and the expansion of consciousness that will come from that is from what I took him to me. But he'll hopefully we can get a, a video together where he can talk more about it and maybe it can answer your question a little bit better than I can. Cause like I said, I don't know everything about everything, but it's not an initiation where you have to pledge allegiance to the devil. That's not what they're talking about. So let's just get that out of the way now. <laughs> so anyway, but that's, I can understand that's where people would interpret it to be. And the one thing that he commented about Helena Bavatsky, where she gets a lot of flack when people read her her work, which I'd never even read this in the Helena Bavatsky work, but that she, she once said that Satan is all-powerful or something like that, and, and people um, pledge their devotion to Satan. Now, what she was saying, according to what Nick Younger was, and, and this makes sense, is Remember I said in, the, in a video or two ago, if you listen to it, that Satan is, represents the selfish nature of humanity. So what she was saying is that we, we worship our own selfish nature. I think there could have been maybe a little bit better ways of explaining what she was trying to say, but that's just the way she explained it. She lived a hundred and something years ago. Maybe it made sense to those people at that time. I'm sure if she was living today, she probably would have expressed it a little differently to get her point across without pissing everybody off. But that's what she meant by that. And what he meant by this is that humanity over the coming time, and this, and it t- and talks about this in the in with Benjamin Crumb's master talks about the awakening of humanity, the enlightenment of humanity over the next two thousand years with the age of Aquarius, you know. But really, if you just wanted to focus on our time, okay, and not worry about what's going to happen twenty five hundred years from now, really the revelations. I, I I mentioned this a few times on this channel. The, like there's there's a few revelations that are coming our way that are going to really rock the perceptions that people have of themselves of the universe and their ourselves within that universe one is there will be a scientific it will be scientifically proven at some point that we are souls in incarnation that we actually have a soul they'll be able to prove it in a lab give it to other scientists to duplicate in their lab, and therefore it would make sense to scientists to only see things under a microscope. That's one. And that will totally revolutionize things because it will make more sense why we need to live harmlessly because we are souls in incarnation. It would also eventually totally over, you know, eliminate the fear of death and disease because we only have fear of death and disease because we think we're only living one lifetime when we actually have several, we, thousands of lifetimes and the purpose behind that and so forth. So that will be a revelation. The other one I think will be what has to do with the UFOs that we talked about. The the true knowledge and proof and evidence that there is life on other planets and we're not alone will totally revolutionize the way we see ourselves in the universe. And also, I think when we truly see Maitreya and these masters out teaching us, seeing that they were actually like us in previous lifetimes, it will give us something to shoot for, but also we will realize that we are not the top of the evolutionary ladder on this planet. There's actually kingdoms above us, even on this planet. The, the one right above us being the masters of wisdom or the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of souls, the hierarchy of masters, whatever name you want to put to it, that's what they're, they're talking about. That will be a revelation. So three really huge revelations that will eventually... As Maitreya says, in the coming time, the greatest transformation will be the hearts and minds of humanity. 
So that's what he was talking about in terms of initiation, meaning a, uh, expansion of consciousness, and Luciferian meaning light, not the devil. So hopefully that clarifies that. But like I said, hopefully in the next week or so, uh, I can bring Nick on and he can talk about that in a lot of ways because he's very familiar with the works of David Spangler. So hopefully that helps. All right. Now, the next cool question comes from Jerry Wells, where we talked, he was asking about uh, the gray aliens, where he says, very interesting info, especially about how they look, meaning how, how do the Space Brothers look. Have you ever heard about the grays and, how tall, and tall whites? Yes, I have. If so, is there any truth to it? According to Benjamin Krem, no. There's no truth to any of that. There's no, in fact, there's no, and it goes back to what I just said about group work and, and the major fear that people have about, you know, when we talk about groups or group consciousness or so forth, which is where we're headed, where you'll lose that individuality that you are, which is not the case. There's no homogenization anywhere in cosmos. There's nobody just like you anywhere in the entire cosmos for as long as cosmos has been in existence or will be in existence. We are totally unique, totally at one, you know? And if you listen to a video where I talked and very briefly about the masters, Ben's master talking about the, the, the art of living and how each one of us has something to contribute to the whole where nobody else, not even Maitreya, can contribute what you can contribute to the, to the whole. It's just we don't see ourselves like that. We see ourselves just as individuals with just living a life, eking out a living, you know what I mean, and then eventually die at some point. But we're, way much, we're so much more than that. We are creative beings in incarnation, learning how to, what it means to be creative, to be loving in that way. You know, and eventually we will love like these masters, be as creative as these masters, have as much joy and compassion toward others as these masters do. But it it will take us starting to manifest what's inside of us in our souls. But totally unique. You know, there will never, you know, like they say, you know, if you're one in a million in uh, in Ch- in China, well, there's a thousand more just like you. There's not a thousand more just like any one of us. We are totally, utterly unique. But yet we're moving into a time where we'll think more in terms of groups and what it means to be a group than it is to just be an individual. Quite extraordinary times, but that, but so the grays don't fit into that because they seem like the same thing, right? But they look like us, according to Benjamin Krem and George Adamski. It just, they look as human as us. Just the Martians are shorter. <laughs> and the reason why Ben said the Martians are shorter because there's more people living on Mars than there are on this planet. And there's nine and a half billion of them. And they live in a, they, the planet Mars is much smaller physically than our planet. So the, the other thing, too, is when it comes to alien abductions, I, I had recorded it earlier in the last video. And then I, when I deleted that video out and re-recorded it, I neglected to talk about this. But there's no truth to alien abductions. There's no truth to animal mutilations. And the animal mutilation thing, according to Benjamin Krem's master, is not coming from the Space Brothers. They don't need to kill animals any more than they need to see what's up our butt. <laughs> you know what I'm they already know what's up our butt. But the, and know what t- makes us tick and our organs and stuff. They don't need to perform experiments on us. They're, they know exactly who and what we are. They know about our technology. Our technology is as crude to them as if we were to go back in time and look at, at a bunch of cavemen playing with rocks and stones and twigs and tying things together like that. It's just as crude to them. Uh, our technology, as advanced as we think it is, is just as crude to them as, as that would be to us. But the animal mutilation thing, he said, was coming from certain government agencies, especially in the United States. And a lot of the upper echelon people like the president didn't know that this was going on. This was just amongst some some lesser organizations, maybe the CIA or, you know, Homeland Security at the time or whatever. But for years they were doing it and it was just a bunch of individuals competing against one another to see who could who could create the most buzz. Just as when it comes to the crop circles, right? Crop circles are evidence of the Space Brothers. They create them all the time. You know, there's a link in the description for CropCircleConnector.net, and you can see all the crop circles that have been reported on this year and last year and the year before and kind of what they look like, the the GPS location of where they are, if you are able to go see them and the, those kind of things. But then there's also, there were government agencies here and in England that were putting out fake crop circles 
that actually destroyed the plant because the real crop circles don't harm the plant at all. They har totally live harmlessly. They work harmlessly and everything like that. But th the ones that were man-made were, were crushing the stalks and so forth so that they could say, hey, see, they're fake. See, they're, see the footprints, they're fake all along when they knew that the other ones were real. So the government's denied... Have, have been denying for decades that there's any evidence of UFOs. Governments like the United States have kind of taken a step further and really tried to denigrate and keep us afraid of those people. It happens, you know, in Hollywood with the movies, but also with some of the reports coming out from the agencies like animal mutilation. But those were all man-made in order to put out there that there, these aliens are something that you should be afraid of. Same thing with the information about the greys and abductions. A lot of it was coming out from the CIA and government agencies, according to these masters, in order to keep us afraid of, the, of these aliens, right? Because they know that if, and I talked about it in the last video, they know that if we knew the, the, that there was humanity on other planets, and if we knew the kind of civilization that they have that lives peacefully, that has true justice, true peace, they live very, very joyful, fulfilling, creative lives, and so forth, in no, nothing but service and are harmless, we would not go to our world leaders for any advice anymore. We would go directly to them. So that's why they put these roadblocks in our way to keep us from thinking that they're here by denying any kind of evidence of them talking about, you know, people that would see a legitimate UFO sighting and they would say, oh, that's just swamp gas or a weather balloon or something to that effect, to the point where they started overstepping the line and really perpetrating an evil on, the, on, on humanity and against humanity by lying and saying that they were, they were here to harm us and trying to offer up this fake evidence that they were. That's what, you know, I would say. But no, there, there's no truth to the greys. There's no truth to any tall whites from different dimensions or different galaxies. They, they are human in nature. We would just be shocked at how they live and how peaceful they live. Now, this isn't every planet. This is just the planets that are able to, and the people that are able to come here. Planets like Pluto, according to Ben's master, you don't want to go there on a dark night because those people are not very nice. <laughs> and so eventually when we get our shit straight, we will eventually help them the same way that the Martians have helped us and the Venusians have helped us. We will actually be responsible for their evolution in that way. And so there's a couple other planets that we don't even know exist that have humanity on there. They're not very advanced. But according to the masters, every single planet has either had humanity on it, it does have humanity on it, or will have humanity on it at some point because they're, they're living beings. That's, that's how those planets evolve. Planets evolve the same way that humans do. You know, they have an evolutionary path. Maybe not the same way humans do. That's, that's an exaggeration. It, they evolve like we evolve, you know, at some point, but on the higher rung of the ladder. And it takes humanity on there to get them to evolve. But there's a plan for each planet. Now, if you look at the lifespan of a planet in terms of their evolutionary lifespan, we're halfway through our what are called rounds. There's nine rounds in a planetary life. We're four and a half, we're right at the halfway point. Mars is around a little bit more advanced than us. Not much, but a little bit more advanced. And then if you look at the Venusian planet Venus, that planetary life is almost at the tail end of the ninth round. So very, very advanced people and humanity on Mars. They come here to help us. They, they come in ships, you know, like they've been purported to do. According to Benjamin Crumb's master, the majority of the ships that you see are made on Mars and given to these other planets for them to, to use. <laughs> so I always view Mars as kind of being the Japan or the Toyota of, of spaceships, I guess. Maybe they're really reliable. And then the, the occupants can either be from uh, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, or Saturn, but mainly from Mars and Venus. Are here helping us so hopefully that answers that question and then uh i think that's pretty much it but anyway uh everybody thank you for commenting and you guys have a great weekend and i look forward to putting up another video remember uh, to early take action week. you guys take care and help sop save our planet thanks for listening and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos <music>